Hi, I'm plastic surgeon Dr. Eddie Doner, and today I'm going to talk about implant removal or explantation and capsulectomy, whether that be a total capsulectomy or end block capsulectomy. Now, as a specialist plastic surgeon, I spent years performing breast enhancement surgery with implants. And during this time, I've also performed countless breast implant removal procedures with or without replacing the implants. However, in recent years, I'm also receiving more and more requests to have implants removed. And the desire to have implants removed is being driven by many factors. Now these include breast implant illness or BII, ALCL, implant related complications such as rupture or capsular contracture, and simply a change in aesthetic preference. In other words, no longer wanting implants. And if you're watching this video on our YouTube channel, check out the links below for videos of where I've discussed BII and ALCL. So what is an implant capsule? Well, when breast implants are initially placed, the body's natural healing process and normal healing process is that it forms a scar tissue sac around the entire implant. Now, this is a normal process for the body to form a scar tissue layer around any foreign object. Now this normal scar tissue lining is indeed the capsule. The capsule effectively seals off the implant from the rest of the body. Now a normal implant capsule is tissue paper thin and soft and really can't be felt. An encapsular contracture, which is a complication which occurs in about 5% of women with implants, this capsule layer becomes abnormally hard and thickened for reasons largely unknown. And basically this capsule becomes thick and it starts to tighten up around the implant, making the breast implant feel hard, it can, can become distorted and even painful. So when a patient is being treated for capsular contracture, the surgeon needs to remove the entire capsule and this is referred to as a total capsulectomy. Now, a total capsulectomy, or at the very least a near total capsulectomy or subtotal capsulectomy, also needs to be performed after a woman has decided that for aesthetic reasons she no longer wants implants. Removing the capsule in this situation allows the breast tissue to stick back down to the chest wall and seal up that empty space left by the now absent implant. Otherwise the breast tissue is going to continue to flop around. So what is or how is a total capsulectomy performed? Well, as previously stated, a total capsulectomy involves removing both the implant and the entire capsule. Rather, it removes, involves removing the entire capsule, I should say. However, it typically involves opening up the capsule to do so. So when you're doing a total capsulectomy, basically you need to get in there and free up that capsule from all the normal breast tissue and chest wall to remove that entire sac. And there's two ways of doing this. Now the first way is basically due to the implant size and general technical difficulties, it's sometimes not possible to completely free up the entire capsule whilst the breast, um, from the breast tissue whilst the implant is still inside. So basically you have the implant, the capsule around it, you're operating via typically a small hole. So getting up around the top end and the back end of the implant via that small hole is typically not, particularly, uh, not, not possible I should say. Now in this situation, whilst I could make a much larger incision to get around the back end, this is typically not an acceptable aesthetic outcome. In other words, the person was not going to want a large scar, generally speaking. So what you do in this situation is you free up as much of the capsule as you can before you get to the point where you can no longer get around it, open up the capsule, take the implant out, the capsule deflates and via that small incision you can then access the top end of that capsule, free it up from the remaining breast tissue and then completely remove the capsule via that small incision. And that's how you've done a, that's doing a total capsulectomy. Now the other way of doing it is in those situations where you can, which is quite often to be honest, where you can free up the entire capsule from the breast tissue with the implant still intact. So the implant still inside I should say. So you via that small incision you've freed up the entire capsule with the implant inside. So now it's free from the breast tissue and it's, it's within that implant pocket. So now you need to remove that from the, um, the implant capsule from that small incision. Well the problem here is the implant with this intact capsule is like a solid ball. It can't be compressed and manipulated to get via that small incision. Now going back to the beginning, when you're initially inserting an implant in, in other words doing a breast augmentation, you have a small incision and the implant can be manipulated and compressed to be fed through that small hole 
So then you get the implant in. That's how you get a big implant in via typically a very small incision. But with an intact capsule, you can't do that. That's a very large bore which can't be compressed. And the only way to get that out, well, there's several ways to get it out, but if you want to leave it like that, then you have to make a much larger incision you know, to get the implant out. And that's typically not going to be um, terribly acceptable for a lot of women. So what you do in this situation is you can make an incision in the capsule partially, and by doing so, you can then partially remove the implant, the capsule starts to deflate, and then you can pass that through implant and capsule together via that small incision, so you pop that out. And that's a total capsulectomy. So there's two ways of performing a total capsulectomy in this situation. So what is an block capsulectomy? And when did this become so important? Well, the actual term block means as one. And when referred to breast implants and capsules, it means removing the implant and the associated capsule as one whole without actually opening the capsule and exposing the implant during the procedure. Now, as far as the end result is concerned, it is a form of total capsulectomy, but performed in a more complicated manner than a routine total capsulectomy. And this is typically an operation requested by those who have breast implant illness, but it's also necessary for those with ALCL. Now, in regard to those who have BII, the actual origins of why an M block capsulectomy became apparently necessary is pretty hard to determine. However, not exposing the body to the contaminating implant during the explantation surgery is considered to be one of the keys to the success in the treatment of BII. Unfortunately, it's become a somewhat hot topic amongst women wanting implants removed. Furthermore, it has been marketed by some surgeons who often, quite frankly, don't fully understand the precise nature of the surgery and the significant potential complications associated with it, or if they do understand it, they are not discussing these with their patients. So what are the dangers and problems of an M-block capsulectomy? Well, a total capsulectomy, as I always say, is typically a far more complex and difficult operation than a simple routine breast augmentation procedure. It involves removing the implant and the capsule during the same operation, although, as previously stated, not, I'm often not removing them as one whole. And as stated, an M-block capsulectomy is a total capsulectomy, but performed in a more complex manner, manner I should say, uh, involving removing the implant and capsule intact in as one whole without breaching the actual capsule and seeing the implant during the process. However, this is often not even possible. Now, whilst I would always intend to remove implants and block, certain issues that you can only determine during the surgery typically make it impossible to do. Now, as mentioned before, a bigger scar is required for an M-block capsulectomy. And typically, the scar is three to four times larger than the usual scar you'd make for a breast augmentation procedure. And the larger the implant, the larger the scar or the larger incision required. Um, so, if you're actually performing a um, implant removal and capsulectomy via typical breast implant incision, that becomes a problem. The patient has to be accepting of a much, much larger scar. And most of the most people would not. Now, of course, when performing a capsulectomy as part of, say, a breast reduction or breast lift procedure, that's not an issue because you have a large wound that you can use. But without that, it is, like I said, a bit too much to expect a woman to accept a very large scar when a, this sort of scar would do for a routine total capsulectomy. The other thing is, it is often not technically possible to perform a total capsulectomy, let alone an M-block capsulectomy. And if a surgeon claims they always perform an M-block capsulectomy, that simply means they've never done one, or quite frankly, they're not being terribly honest. Now, why am I saying that? Well, a normal capsule is typically very thin, and with an implant placed under the muscle, which is how most surgeons tend to do it, often the capsule attached to the chest wall, or the back part of the capsule, it's typically fused to the chest wall ribs and, and muscles. So it's um, part of the ribs and muscles. So to attempt to remove the capsule here would involve serious risk. It would involve damaging the ribs, significant bleeding, and with a very high risk of puncturing the lungs, which lie just below the implant, um, the capsule lining. And this is an issue which can only be determined during the surgery. And these patients, for safety reasons and for simple technical reasons, will end up having what is called a subtotal capsulectomy. So you can't remove that part of the back end of the capsule. 
Another example where it would not be possible and safe to perform an M-block or total capsulectomy would be, would be when the breast tissue and skin is extremely thin. To remove or attempt to remove the capsule in this situation could cause a number of potential complications including causing the overlying skin to die off which would of course be a disaster. Now these patients once again will end up having a subtotal capsulectomy. Now if I'm doing a capsulectomy and cannot remove the entire capsule, I'll typically cauterize any remaining capsule left in the body. And I'll do this for several reasons, including to make it rough so that the area can seal and close up the empty space left now by the um, absent implant. So, does breast implant removal cure BII symptoms? And once again, I'd encourage you to watch my BII video. Um, but as stated in that video, no scientific evidence exists to support that BII exists. Therefore, no scientific evidence exists to demonstrate that removing implants cures BII. However, for many women, removing their implants has resolved their symptoms. To complicate matters, zero scientific evidence exists to show that any difference exists in curing BII between implant-only removal, implant removal with subtotal capsulectomy, implant removal with a total capsulectomy, and an M-block capsulectomy. But even in the cases where symptoms persist, at the very least, implant removal typically provides peace of mind. And this appears to be especially the case in those who have had an M-block capsulectomy. Ultimately, breast implant removal is performed to see if the breast implants are indeed a factor in your BII symptoms in these situations. In the end, your surgeon of choice is of course, as always, very important. As stated earlier, it is easier to do a routine breast augmentation than it is to do a total capsulectomy. So if you think it's difficult finding a good surgeon to do your breast augmentation, then it's gonna be far more difficult to find a quality surgeon who can remove them properly and safely. You basically need to choose a surgeon with extensive experience in implant removal. And if you have only one goal in mind, an M-block capsulectomy, and you go shopping for a surgeon who performs and guarantees your M-block capsulectomy, then you're probably not going to find the right doctor for you. As a Sydney specialist plastic surgeon, I've treated many women over the years removing breast implants for all manner of reasons. Many of these cases we have recorded, with our patient's consent of course, and some of these videos can be found on our YouTube channel. So if you are watching this on our YouTube channel, check out the links below to some of the videos where we've performed various types of capsulectomies. And if you no longer want your breast implants or have health concerns related to them, please contact my office to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with myself and let's talk about it. Anyway, thank you for listening.